Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today it's part two of my look at the M162 LCR meter kit from JYE Tech. Now in the last video, you'll remember I took a look at the contents of the kit and then assembled and tested the kit itself. So today we're going to have a look in a bit more detail about the spec of the kit some little modifications that you may or may not want to make. I'm going to test it with some standards that I've got here for resistance, capacitance and inductance. And I'll be comparing it against a bench LCR meter that cost £300, which is the East Tester ET4410. So a £44 meter versus a £299 meter. Let's see how this stacks up well against the big boys. So looking at the spec of the M162 LCR meter on the AccuDIY site, it all looks very promising. We've got a resistance range of 0.1 ohms to 20 meg ohms, a capacitance range of 1 picofarad to 20 millifarads, and an inductance range of 1 microhenry to 20 kilohenries. And they claim an accuracy of about 1%. So this all looks rather promising. Now, a couple of nifty tips I learned after assembly of the kit. They do give you this little gadget in the kit. And it seems these were a little extra that they give you to set the spacing of these test pins here. Now, all I've done is when I soldered mine on is just get them as tight as possible. I actually used some little crock clips to pinch them together as I soldered them in on both sides. And I find that makes them nice and stable. They're not gonna move about. And they also give you this little bit of PCB here, which you can use for short zeroing to remove any residual or offset that may be there. And there's also the option to do open zeroing as well with nothing across the terminals, depending on what you want to measure. It's gonna be different depending if you're doing high or low impedance components. Now, as we saw on the last episode, it all works very well, just using the little test clips on the front to pop a component in, much like you would with my little T7 tester, which I'm a big fan of. So I've got this in capacitance, I can pop this 100 microfarad capacitor in there and it will give me a reading, which seems very promising. Now that's all very useful, but I thought, how on earth can I improve this? Because sometimes I do want to measure components that are in circuit or partially in the circuit. So how can I make this unit a bit more flexible to use? So one option you could do is to just solder your four leads to these four test connectors here. And you can use a screened cable and solder also to the earth point there to stop any stray interference. Possibly you could make some holes and put some banana plugs in the front of the case there to make it a bit more useful. I do feel like it deserves to have some test leads like our large bench LCR meter does. So I've got myself some crock clips and I've soldered on some cables. So I've used screen cable. So that's one cable to each side of the clip because this is a four cable connection on this. And then my screening I've soldered to the earth point. But what I've done, I haven't soldered directly to the kit itself. Now, I was pretty fortunate enough to be given one of these little plugs. Now, a friend of mine that also does electronics asked me if this was any good to me. And it's been rattling around in a drawer for a while. And as soon as I saw the contacts on this LCR meter kit, I realized that actually these are a perfect match for it. And they slot in beautifully on the front there. So I haven't had to actually make any modification to the kit. I just had to buzz out the little box there to find out which points I needed to solder to. And then I've just popped some heat sink onto the handles of the crock clips just to make it a little bit neater and looks a little bit more professional. I think actually these crock clips look a little bit like the ones that come with the more expensive meter that we're gonna look at in a moment. So I'm quite pleased with this little arrangement. So the function of the unit is very simple. You've only got three buttons to worry about there. The bottom one skips between your resistance 
capacitance and inductance. The middle button switches between series and parallel and the top one is your hold function. So you use the bottom button to get into your settings menu so you just hold that down for a few seconds that takes you into the settings menu and you use the bottom button to move down so you can change your frequency there which you can change between 1 kilohertz and 100 hertz and you just use the middle button to change the parameter. The bottom button again to move down you can change your speed you've got two load speeds a medium speed and two high speeds you can then change your bottom parameter between rx and za depending on what statistics you want to be viewing you can turn your serial port out on and off there and your serial mode now i did have a bit of a delve around with the serial port i didn't have a lot of luck because most of the drivers on the website do seem to be for xp vista or windows 7 but someone out there with a bit more persistence will probably have found a way of doing that for me the serial port is not that much of a worry i'm not that interested in recording my measurements onto the computer generally i will be using this to get my reading on the screen which will tell me if the component at that time is any good or if i think the component needs to be replaced so for me the serial ports neither here nor there but it is a feature of the unit your mileage may vary depending on how much you want to persist in getting the serial port working. Now there's loads of information and loads of drivers on the JYE Tech website and you can even get a piece of software on there to update the firmware on this unit. Now one of the reasons I bought this unit particularly from AccuDIY.com is coming from JYE Tech rather than a third party so it's a more up-to-date and more likely to be a genuine unit. As we saw with the kits from some other suppliers in the past there are some clones out there and some cloned chips so to be sure of getting a genuine unit with genuine components I went straight to JYE Tech via the AccuDIY.com website. Now the firmware on this is the latest which is from February of this year. If you've got a version with the older firmware you can update it using your USB cable provided, plug it into your computer and download the drivers and the firmware update from the JYE website. All very handy, they've got loads of information on there. There's a PDF of the instruction manual on there and there's loads of helpful hints and tips to get you started with this device. It's nice to see so much support for this unit. So again, you may be able to find these units cheaper elsewhere, but is it the genuine article? Your mileage may vary. We've seen this with the components, which we'll be testing some of those in a moment. Some genuine components versus components from certain third party websites that the quality may be variable. You never know if you're gonna get the genuine component or not. You're much better off buying from a reputable supplier. So we've got our meter together, we know how it works, we've tested it, we know the firmware is up to date. So let's use it to test some known standards and I'll bring in the Bench LCR tester to get some comparative results. So this is what I'll be comparing our little M162 LCR meter to. Some say it might not be quite a fair test, but it's interesting to see how a 44 pound LCR meter kit stacks up against a bench top meter that costs 299 pounds. This is the East Tester ET4410. It's a very nice meter, not mine unfortunately. I was lucky enough to have this on loan for a little while to do a comparison. You may have seen this used in a couple of previous videos where I was lucky enough to have it for a few days. So let's get the ball rolling with this standard resistor, the one with the big ears. This is 1k ohm or 1000 ohms. Let's see what we get with this. Let's change the function to resistance. This is all part of the fun of electronics. You get to deal with resistors with big ears. Right, so what have we got? Now that's pretty good, isn't it? So we have got 1.004 kilo ohms on our little meter here. That's pretty darn good, I'd say. Going to do the same thing on the East Tester. Here we go. Resistance, 1 kilohertz, slow. 
Okay, and the East test is giving us 1.0024. Fantastic. So we've got 1.004 on the M162 and 1.024 on the East tester. Okay, so we've tried a fairly common value. Let's go to some extremes here. This may look a bit like a thermos flask, but it's less good at keeping your soup warm and better at being a standard resistor. Now this one is one meg ohm. So let's see how we get on with this. Wow, that is really not far off fluctuating ever so slightly there so what we can do is use our earth socket here and go to the earth on the top of the standard resistor see if that stabilizes a little bit and it does does make a difference so that has stabilized and that is pretty spot on can't say fairer than that let's try that on the east tester okay so i'll do the same again with the earth there we go so you can see i've got my earth in there I've got on the front of the East Tester, and the East Tester is giving me 997.9 .9 kilo ohms. Fantastic! Right, put the lid on, keep my soup warm for later. Now we go to the other extreme, this is 0 0.1 ohm. So we're reading uh, 105.6 milli ohms or 0.106 ohms. So again, not far off, but we are going to the extremes here. Okay, let's try that on the East Tester. Okay, and we are reading 0 0.107, 0 0.108. So apologies for the reflection of the light there. So now we're going to need to change this from resistance to capacitance. Clip these on, see what we get. And we are 1.001 .001 microfarads. You don't get much closer than that, do you? That's awesome. Well, they claim 1% accuracy on this meter kit. I would say it's probably even better than that. Right, let's try this on the East Tester. I want to be changing this to capacitance. There we go. Okay, this one's reading in nanofarads 999.3.4. Say so in this particular case, the kit was actually slightly closer. Now this little guy is a thousand picofarads or one nanofarad. Now let's see if we can get a measurement on this. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, 991.6 picofarads. And we are getting 990.3. Okay, again, not a massive amount in it. Considering the price difference, Remember, this meter is six times, well, more than six times the price of what I paid for the M162. Obviously, this has got a lot more functionality. It's not quite a straight comparison. Now, this rather fabulous looking inductor is 1000 microhenries or 1 millihenry. So let's change this to inductance. So we know what we should have. We are reading 999.7 microhenries. Oh, the app's just ticked over to a thousand. Perfect, absolutely perfect, spot on. Fantastic. Okay, we've swapped to inductance on there. And that is giving us 1.0010 oh, millihenry. Now that's pretty darn close, given the difference in price range. I'd say the M162 stands up really well. Right, so that's a good run through of some standards there for capacitance, resistance, inductance. Let's take a look at a few more standard components that you might find in a circuit. I have got a few other standard inductances laying around the place, but seeing as these are all pretty accurate, I see no reason to go any further. There is more to life than inductors, although these ones are rather pretty. Okay, so going back to resistance, this is just a standard resistor, a known good one that I tend to use, which is a 10 ohm resistor. So we just pop that in and there we go, 10.09. Pretty good, I'd say. Well within the 1% tolerance that the manufacturer claims. So let's have a look at some capacitors and see what we get with an ESR reading. Now this is a good old Hunts capacitor that I took out of my Advance E1 recently. We know it was no good. So let me pop it on here. Now this is supposed to be eight microfarads. I'm getting a reading of 184.8 nanofarads and an ESR of 
eight two killer ohms. Well, I knew it was no good, but it's really very no good. Now, let's try this one, which I have replaced. Now, here's one that I've replaced as a matter of course, but it actually wasn't too bad. This is a Wang's 2200 microfarad. Let's pop that on and see what this meter gives me. And that's giving me a reading of... So it's giving me 2.6 millifarads there. So within tolerance, not amazing, which is probably why I replaced this one. ESR of 36 to 37 milliohms on this one probably why I replaced that particular one. Let's have a look at a couple more. This is just a 100 microfarad cap that I just took out of something. I think it was out of the Intellivision console. So still reading as 100 microfarads with a ESR of 417 milliohms. So probably not too bad. I think I just replaced the whole bunch of them just to be sure. Now, now here's one of a bunch of cheaper than cheap AliExpress capacitors, complete non-branded, non-descript, no idea what we're getting. And you can see the difference between buying a known branded capacitor and an unknown from AliExpress, even though they're incredibly cheap. We're only getting uh, 83 microfarads there. We were expecting nearer to 100. Okay, there's a bit of tolerancing there, but it's way further off than the branded caps that we looked at. An ESR of 660 milliohms. That's why I'd always go with branded capacitors from a reputable supplier, even though the ones on AliExpress or Wish or similar sites, they're super, super cheap. But are you getting a genuine component? And is it going to be up to the spec that they claim? You never know. So in conclusion, I'd say the M162 LCR meter is a great little bit of kit. I really enjoyed putting the kit together. It goes together really well. The instructions supplied are great. And there's loads of help and support on the website. Now, I'm not affiliated with JYE Tech in any way. I bought this myself. I just think it's a really good kit for the money. Yes, it's not going to be as accurate as a really expensive handheld or benchtop LCR meter, but it really held its own. And I think it did give the bigger LCR meter a run for its money. For £44, most of the readings were pretty darn good. We only really saw its limitation when we went to the extremes of the higher and lower levels, where it did struggle a little bit. But for £44, or less, if you choose to get one from AliExpress or Wish, then you've got yourself a nice little budget LCR meter. I fully intend to use this on the bench. Some of the little meters that I've built really have ended up being display pieces because they weren't really up to the job. But I think this actually is going to go in my drawer of useful meters. And I think I will be giving this a bit more use. I will be taking a look at some other LCR meters somewhere down the line, but for now, I've got to say, really do recommend this little kit, the M162 LCR meter. So I hope you enjoyed building this kit with me and taking a look at it as much as I have. It's great to get back to doing some electronics kits. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing. It's always massively appreciated. I'll be back soon with some more tech-related videos. So until then, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.